Um, there was a, a journey, Mike was on that journey, there was a journey three, four years ago, um, and at the time the prospects didn't look good. Um, King said that there was this place in the forest and that someone's dog had gone down and things weren't good. So I got to go on a hero's journey with Dan Pico, who's going to get up in a minute with me here. And that journey's taken many forms. Uh, there was the journey that was fun to plan and co-creating that with a small group of men. Mike was a part of that, Russell Cramp and another man, uh, David Bowerly. And there was the part of that hero's journey that was the extraordinary man that Dan is. Um, and my opportunity to see him iteratively in his family, in his community in Central Plains and Sioux City, and his stewardship of that transition, um, and in the other places in Sioux City where Dan makes a difference. And um, uh, it, you know, we've needed heroes in this work, and we have more and more of them every day, and it gives me great pleasure in front of his son to, uh, to invite one of my heroes, Dan Pico, up to speak to us. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. And I felt warmly welcomed the whole time I've been here. Uh, my edge about six months ago, I decided was to work on receiving love. Block. Love. I'm pretty good at radiating it and letting it. So you've been really helping me practice the blessings again. Warm welcome. And in turn, I want to bless you, men. Uh, this is a spectacular group of men. And I like the emphasis on uh, king energy I've heard about. So my intention in the next 30 minutes is for us to expand and to inspire. To expand and inspire. And uh, Jewel blessed me. He wanted to hear about King Energy, which was right on point. Charlie blessed me. He wanted to hear more about circles. They go out into the world, not just the eye groups and the circles we do. So I'll be talking about that as well. But the one thing that really strikes me is about owning our King Energy. And John Levitt made a very nice presentation in the uh, eye group forum around we're creating communities of kings. Creating circles of kings. How are you going to show up when you get back? Are you going to be a king? Right? And then Rick Morgenstern got up and said, what's our vision? And many beautiful things rolled out. Pages of beautiful ideas. But nobody said community of kings. And so it evaporated from our consciousness the moment we looked away. And I just want us to notice that. Just, just notice and it makes sense to me. This country was founded on killing the king. <laughs> we kill kings. That's what this country is about. Don't tell me what to do. I'm a rugged individualist. I'm going to do it my way. Right? We know that energy. That's the shadow. That's what's taken us off point. Even when we just talked about it. So, I went into meditation to get clear about what I want to give you right now as a gift. I just love you all. I just fall in love with this group, the passion, the, the intelligence, the commitment, the courage. Uh, and, and this is what arose for me. So it's a visualization. So if, if it's alright with you, go ahead and uh, get comfortable, get your feet on the floor. Feel your feet on the floor. And I'm going to ring this uh, singing bowl. It's uh, one of my favorite things. I don't have much I'm attached to, but I'm attached to this bowl. It's handmade from Japan. And uh, I'll share it with you now. So as you hear the bowl, let that vibration penetrate your heart. I'd like us to drop out of our minds and into our hearts as we breathe slowly and listen to the bell.
breathe deeply. Expand your heart. Notice your feet on the floor. Give awareness to how the earth supports you. How the earth has supported you every step of your life. Breathe up into your ankles, your legs, your knees, those precious joints. Breathe up into your upper leg, your groin, your balls, tailbone. Take another breath and breathe into your guts, the center of your immune system. Breathe up into your solar plexus, your power center. Breathe up into your lungs, your heart, up into your shoulders and down your arms, forearms, hands, fingers, those beautiful hands that are changing the world. Breathe into your neck, open your throat, breathe into your jaw, chin, face, nose, eyes, ears, forehead, top of your head. I invite you to open the top of your head. So your whole body is a hollow bone, a conduit, a channel for king energy. This is where we access the king. And in this space, I'd like to invite in a paradox. So continue to breathe and consider the truth or the possibility of this truth that you are Magnificent, beautiful, talented, brilliant, whole, just as you are. Nothing needs to be added, nothing needs to be fixed. You are magnificent, beautiful, talented, brilliant, and whole. And as you breathe this in, notice where it resonates in your body. Notice where you may have resistance. Just simply notice. Now add into this awareness of truth the paradox. And there is room to grow and things to do. There is room to grow and things to do. So you are magnificent, nothing needs to be added, and there is room to grow and things to do. Notice where it resonates in your body, this paradox. Notice where there may be resistance. Just welcome it in. Now give awareness to the energy of your body. Consider a circle or a sphere. Perhaps it's inside you, perhaps it circumscribes your body, maybe it's bigger than your body. Just give it awareness. And then my invitation is to expand it tenfold like a balloon. Blow it up. Make it bigger. Ten times. Your field of your energy, ten times larger. Just breathe into that. And now I invite us all to breathe that energy and make the bubble fill the whole room. Fill the whole room with your radiant energy. And as you feel that expansion, be aware that all the other bubbles are also expanding to fill the whole room. So there's actually only one bubble. One radiant bubble of energy in this room. One organism of leadership. One body of men that are changing the world. Just notice. Now come back into your body, into your chair, wiggle your toes and hands, open your eyes. Come back into the room. More like a king, a little more awareness of just how magnificent you are, and not only individually but collectively. 
utterly brilliant group of men. So I really have nothing to add or offer here. It's all here, man. You've already got it. It's already been done. And it'll be spectacular to see how it unfolds. Now, I did want to just share a few things for me. I, I believe in the ten times expansion. I think there's a step change that's available to each of us. And we're just not aware of it. It's just opening our awareness to it. Uh, for example, on the new warrior training, we all have some measure of experience with that. For me, that was a step change. It completely blew the doors off. And my awareness of the possibilities of my being. And I believe meditation offers the same potential. And that was my experience at Hollow Bones in December of 2008. I did a seven-day silent retreat. I had never meditated for more than ten minutes. I had some buddies going, or I would have probably done it myself. I'm like, all right, I'm in. That's going from the baby pool to the deep end in one jump. It was nuts. It was a very powerful experience. And what I see now, through Ken Wilbur, We've talked about him here some, but he talks about lines of intelligence. How many here to have some sense of what that is? Okay, well let me take a little time with it, because I think it provides a context for just how powerful this work and our potential to shift ourselves and the world really is. So Wilbur suggests there's seven lines of intelligence that are fundamental. But there are many lines of intelligence. So for years we measured IQ, right? And then Daniel... Is it Goldstein? Goldman. Goldman, sorry. Came up with EQ, emotional intelligence. So we're aware that there's different kinds of intelligences. That's out there, I think. Uh, gardening would be a line of intelligence. If you've ever talked to Master Gardener, it's amazing how excited they get about soil and shade and sun. Uh, music certainly is a line of intelligence. But Wilbur suggests these seven are primary. Cognitive, emotional, Spiritual, interpersonal, introspective, somatic, which is the body, and moral. And what I think is interesting about that from my perspective is the cognitive line pretty much is the unfolding of Western civilization. So the cognitive line of intelligence is numbers, math, physics, calculus, science, technology, all the rest of it. And words, paragraphs, logic, theories, stories. Right? And a civilization, we've developed that one line of intelligence like nobody's business. So if we map the human mind and its potential, it'd be as if we were a bodybuilder that just built up our bicep. Right? It's just a gigantic bicep. And the rest of the body is relatively undeveloped. We cover emotional intelligence, right? Nobody else. And it really wasn't until Carl Jung and the idea of the shadow that that even really became a serious option for the culture. So it's, it's a new idea. And it's incredibly powerful. And we know something about that. And we have these magnificent programs and protocols and tools and communities to deliver emotional intelligence. It's an amazing feat in human history. Read that in. And we get to sit in the room with this thing. It's a privilege just to be part of this in any way. And then, if we combine that with spiritual intelligence, which Wil Wilbur mostly talks about meditation, there's this, a sort of psychoactive or catalytic effect. So it's not like meditating is nice, shadow work is nice. It's, it's as if they feed on each other. There's a real big expansion our awareness. And I've been so delighted to hear so many of you are meditating. And 12 men were at uh, the meditation this morning that Paul did a beautiful job leading. You know, we're getting it. And in particular, uh, MKP is a joint venture with Hollow Bones Mondo Zen for three day sets uh, around the country. I think we're doing, what, four or six this year? Four. four. One will be in Griswold, Iowa, October 31st, November 1-2, Central Plains, so I'm really excited about that. And there'll be another one in New upstate, York. Upstate New York in September, LA, uh, mid-October, and uh, mid-Atlantic in uh, December. All right, okay, so just look if you're interested. 
So it's not about, it's about invitation. But my encouragement is that this is so big, to give it a taste. And it may not be for you. But if it is, there's this potential for expansion that's not small, it's a step change. That's just as the weekend can be. So I just want to share some step change experiences for myself as a way of uh, maybe perhaps helping you or inspiring you or giving some insight or encouraging you to share your own changes that you've seen. Uh, the first that John Levitt uh, noted was, you know, I have an initiated family. I got so emotional. And it didn't even occur to me that that was a possibility. That was never a thought in my head until Thanksgiving uh, 2012, and I'm looking at my family, and my daughter had just done Women Within. Because she wanted to. No one even asked her to. She said, I'm ready. I'm doing it. And, and my son Charlie's here. He did it in 2007. Mm -hmm. And Jenna was like 2006. And my wife had done Women Within like four years before. And I was just overwhelmed with love and joy and wonder and gratitude. So my sense is, you know, the universe meets us when we're serious about our work. And if you keep doing the work, eventually the work does you. And you get blessed. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, so just real quickly, one, one other piece about that is we do family Skype calls. And we check in. And sometimes the kids want to do work. <laughs> it's, you know, pinch me. I can't believe this. Wow. So just four weeks ago, we're going on family vacation. I had my daughter in the car with me, you know, check in. I mean, she loves this stuff. And at some point, she's back in her sophomore year of high school. And that was one of the toughest years of her life. And she said, that's the year our relationship shifted. Um, because I showed up for her. And I'm not aware of what I did. I'm really not. I, I love her. But whatever I did, it was her knowing for sure that I loved her no matter what. So she's crying and I'm crying. She's 26 now, so this was 10 years ago. And one year after my new warrior training. What a gift. What a gift. And it just inspires me to do the work, do the work, do the work. And the rest will happen. And I don't even have to know what it will be. So that's a personal story. I'd like to share... Uh, community story. Uh, my great-great-grandfather settled in Sioux City in 1852, which happens to be the year this place was built. I think that's pretty interesting. And he was a fur trader on the Missouri River, and he learned the Lakota language. So he was a trader with this furs, and he would lead trading expeditions up into South Dakota and trade with the, the local natives. And there's a family story. We've got a few arrows in the back on a trade that went awry. But he, so he's a wild man, he's on the edge of the frontier, and the beginning of that European white migration, that ultimately in the 1880s, nearly exterminated a race. Genocide happened on American soil. And this is a wound we have not addressed. That didn't make it on any of the discussion. But I'm aware of because of where I live and because of my family history. Well, eight years ago, uh, Chief Mel Longhill brought seven uh, of his men down to do a weekend in Sioux City. It was a big deal. National wanted leaders to be coming in, a lot of walking on eggshells, fear that we're going to screw it up, offend. It, it was a big opening to connect with the Lakota men. And so it was a wild, wacky weekend. But at the end of it, those Lakota men were singing us a Lakota friendship song. And men were weeping. And this young warrior in particular who was just steaming with hate on the front end. I, I was the leader of the, uh, the descent. So I got to see him come in the door. And he was just, I was scared. Like, wow, that is the most intense heat I've ever seen. On the silent goodbye, he was not silent. He hugged every single man. And we all wept. That sold me on the new warrior training and what we do. If we could do that, as bumbling as we were, this stuff works. 
Trust your brothers. Trust the circle. Do your work, and the rest will unfold. So I went up to the reservation with this idea, yeah, we're going to teach them how to do eye groups, and we'll sit in a circle with men, and this is going to be amazing. And what I learned was that the reservation is so dysfunctional. Poverty is so extreme. There's rape, there's turf wars, there's gangs, there's violence, there's alcoholism, there's drug abuse. It was devastating to feel the pain that those people were living with. I went to Wounded Knee and felt just grief go through my body where people were, were massacred in the 1880s. So I, I came back home sobered, realizing this is so much bigger than getting a few men together. So much bigger. And, and helpless. I really didn't know what to do. But then Dallas Chief Eagle did a weekend in Colorado about four years ago. And he got it. He said, this work heals men from the inside out. That's what needs, we need. This will work for us. And Dallas was a college graduate, a degree in social work. He's a hoop dancer. He's danced all over the world. So he's a man of the world and a man of his people. I think of him as Neo in the Matrix. That we needed the one and the one showed up. Uh, I was so excited. So I called Dallas about every two months to say, how you doing, and support him. He's a visionary. I'm a visionary, so we love to talk. I love it because I have freedom to be as ignorant as I am with him and be open about it, and he's happy to fill me in. And he's got a vision. And part of the vision was to have trainings on the reservation. So he's converted his barn into a training center. And my son Charlie was there on the 1st of August when they did the Boys to Men training in that barn. So the first time we went to them, finally. But we had to do it right. We had to wait for Dallas. Next week I'll go with my wife to the reservation and we're going to do a couple's workshop. Healing the, the rift between men and women in a matriarchal culture. So I'm open to being totally dismantled about all that I don't know. Uh, he wants to have a new warrior training on the reservation. He's, he wants to do work in the prisons, in the Sioux Falls, and it's happening. The world's coming to meet him. Leaders from around the network, men from around the network, uh, he's aware of, and he's getting what he needs. So you're creating that. You created that. This is a step change. So in November of last year, we held a uh, Central Plains meeting. So we had representatives from Iowa City, Omaha, Sioux City, Pine Ridge, Minnesota, which is joining us, Des Moines. Men travel. I figured like half the radius of the earth total. To be in the same room together, it's wonderful. And in that meeting, uh, there was a time for Dallas to speak. And Dallas got up and said, Something to the effect. You know, 130 years ago, we had allies. We had alliances with the Apache. We had alliances with the Cheyenne. And then 120 years ago, we had no more allies. Until now. You men are our allies. And the, the fact for me is like, the walls got blown out, the roof got blown out. You know, something big just happened. Uh, so we're doing it. We're doing it where no one has ever thought it could be done. That's the power of this work. That's the power of your king. And our collective kingship. Did I forget anything, Charlie? How am we doing? <laughs> 25 minutes and... <laughs> You're rocking. <laughs> oh, no, Charlie asked me to talk about Ivy. Right? Okay. Well, so, I just want to share one other step change possibility, just to offer it out to you. And that is the check-in. How many of you men check in outside of the MKP structures? Awesome. Okay, so maybe you guys already have this. Yeah, so I check in with my business partner every day. I check in with my assistant every day. I check in with my family. It just makes life work so much better. 
And my assistant is so excited, she's like telling everybody she knows. So I meet people I don't even know. I say, well, aren't you Shelby's boss? I, say, I go, yeah. So you're the one who does those check-ins, right? Go, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I just encourage you, be a circle wherever you go, and we can create safety because we know how to do it. And a check-in is an easy way to do that. Uh, yeah. So thank you for your blessing. Uh, it's just such a joy to be part of healing the world in this way, creating a new way of being for men from isolation and separation, the, the shadow of not good enough. I think that's what drives all the whole of us into communities of men. Where we love and trust each other. A web of trust that we can create whatever we want from. Uh, so you are a magnificent, beautiful, talented, brilliant, whole man. God bless you all. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh.